Hey, what's up, cats and kittens? And shout out to all my cerebralites. It's me, the Cerebral Diva. And I'm going to, yeah, this is going to be another episode of You Say What? Because I really value the opinions of my listeners and I want to know what you guys think about a situation that happened to me over the weekend. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was out on a date. Um, I'll probably make another video about that one. But while on the date, my phone started uh, going off. Now, I, I'm not one of those people. The date and I, we were at a movie. And I I turned the volume down, the ringer completely off on my phone. So my phone is silent. But And then I turned um, the, the screen down as well so that it's not so bright. So while I'm in the movie, my phone starts going off. And I'm like, who's, who's calling me? Who's texting me? And I look down at the phone. And it was my ex-boyfriend's mother. So she's texting me, asking me if I had some time today to sit down and have a meeting with her. Now, I know she wants to talk to me about the relationship that I used to have with her son. And I remember telling her, now th this is the part that's a little bit... um troubling for me because I remember telling her at one point in time if you ever need me if you ever want to talk you know I'm always here and sometimes you say that and you don't act, expect people actually to redeem the coupon but she redeemed it and so now even though I don't want to talk to him I almost feel obligated just being a woman of my word to, to have a sit down and conversation with her because I did give her that promise and I don't want my promises to just be lip service so let me tell you guys why I stopped talking to him. So he is a aspiring professional bodybuilder. And in addition to being a bodybuilder or aspiring bodybuilder, he is a raging alcoholic by my personal estimation. Now, I had no idea that he was a raging alcoholic when I first met him because he really downplayed the significance of alcohol in his life. He's just like, oh, you know, I just like to have a good time every now and again. It's not really that important to me. And having not, you know, like full access to his life, I sort of took him at his word. So as time went on, you know, signs began to reveal themselves. Like I would see him drinking more and more and more. Now, one day in particular, um, he called me up and he asked me to go to a movie. And I agreed to go to the movies with him. So he calls me at like maybe 12, 8, 12, 12 p.m. in the afternoon and says, hey, let's go to a movie today. So I said, sure. And he's like, well, look at movie times and, you know, then let me know. So I check out movie times, let him know. And then I text him with the movie times and he doesn't respond until like 3 p.m. 3 p.m. he calls me back and says, oh, babe, I'm sorry. Some stuff came up. I was handling business. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, I, you know, time just got away from me. He's like, okay, check the movie times again and get back to me. So being the, the dutiful uh, girlfriend, I checked the times, send them over to him again. And no response once again. Okay, so now I'm getting pissed off. So... He calls me around 7.30, right? And keep in mind that this all started at noon. So here we are at 7.30. And I've gotten dressed and undressed twice in a single day. Twice. And I'm an extremely impatient person. You have no idea. When I say I'm impatient, I am impatient. Especially if I'm dressed. If, you're gonna, if you tell me you're going to be someplace or do something... Be where you're going to be when you say you're going to be there or either give me a heads up so that I'm not looking like the crazy person. So seven o'clock, he's like, oh, babe, I just OK, I'm on my way now, but I just have to run to the liquor store because they're about to close soon. Excuse me. You've kept me waiting not once, but twice. And now you want to put me on a hole a third time so you can run to the liquor store as if that's a priority. No, I don't want to go to the movies. Do whatever it is that you're doing. Just leave me alone. 
So when I say that to him, he's like, um, oh, don't be like that. Don't be like, I'm on my way. I'm sorry. I know I should have done this, 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 and this. And so you know how we can be as women sometimes. I'm like, all right, just give him another shot. So the dude winds up not showing up a third time. Okay, that's it. I'm done. So at that point, even if he showed up, I knew the experience, the experience was going to be a negative experience. So I didn't even want him to come at all, period. There was no atoning that particular day for the fact that he had been late and unapologetically so. Like He's one of those people who, when they're late, they almost feel like they're entitled to be late or something's wrong with you for expecting them to be on time. So after that, um, the day was canceled and apparently it was canceled in his mind a long time ago because he didn't look like he had any intentions on actually showing up. So, um, I'm sorry guys, my phone is going off right now. So that was one of the situations that really burned me. So on New Year's of this year, you know how the New Year sort of had, it's a very reflective time when you start looking back at the past year and start looking forward toward, towards the rest of your life and asking yourself, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? What do I see in myself? So it's New Year's Eve 2016 going into 2017. And, you know, so this is this is pretty recent, you guys. So I'm sitting home and I'm being really reflective about what I wanted. And I realized I had a phone full of guys and no one that I really felt connected to, no one that I really wanted to be with. Um, And so I'm like, why do you have all of these guys in your phone, you know, just as sort of seat fillers? Just And, and I think to, to a large degree, if I'm being completely honest, for me, it was really a... Um, it's a self-esteem booster. You know, you feel like, okay, well, you know, clearly I'm, the guys find me attractive. Look at all the numbers in my phone. So it was almost like I collected phone numbers as a hobby and as a means to to validate the fact that I was single, not by um, by lack of options, but by choice. So, but, or single by design and not by default. So... I was looking at all these phone numbers and I said to myself, you need to stop. Maybe the reason that you're not really with the man that you want is because you have too much clutter, too much, you know, too many guys, you know, too much white noise. So I decided at that point, I sat down and I looked at my contacts and I went down contact by contact and checked them all. And I sent out this mass text and said, you know, moving forward in 2017, I'm going to be making some changes in my life. And one of the changes that I'm making is not having room for people who are are of no true significance to me. Now, I know that sounds harsh and that was not the intent, but I wanted a lot of the guys that I had been talking to to understand if they text me or call me in the future, why I wasn't responding and that I just, just didn't fall off the face of the earth. So I'm giving you, and I'm sort of giving you guys sort of a a bridge version of the text message, but that was the gist of it pretty much. So I sent out this text message and um, as soon as I sent out the text message, I blocked all of the numbers because I didn't want responses from anyone. So it wasn't a cry for attention because if it were a cry for attention, I would have not blocked everyone. So I sent out the message telling people I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. And this is just not, this is not friends. These were guys who were prospective romantic interests that had not materialized into anything significant. So that's who the message was uh, for. So I sent out that message. I blocked all of them from contacting me. And then... (laughs) Ironically enough, I wound up going out on a date for New Year's Eve with someone who didn't mean anything to me. Um, So I go out on a date, come home. So we're about a month maybe into the New Year. So it's approaching February. And I get a call from a, a random number. I'm like, who is this? So my curiosity got the better of me. And I picked up the phone and it was Mr. Mr. Movie who didn't show up on time. And he's like, you know, I can't believe you would do me like that. You know, you just blocked me out of your life. Like, I didn't mean anything to you. You know, how could you do that? You know, like, 
so right now he's feeling very victimized in this situation. So he's like, you know, I know I made some mistakes, you know, but, you know, give me another chance. So going against my better judgment, I decided to give him another chance. So he schedules another date. He shows up on time. Um, We go see a movie now. One of the things I didn't like about him either is that he's not like a gentleman gentleman. He's just like a chocolate, you know, like he's just, I don't know, like Cro-Magnon in, in, in his social skills. So he shows up to, um, pick me up. He doesn't open doors. He's just like, I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing with this dude? Why are you even going there? But by that point I had already committed to the date. So we go on a date. The movie's good. We hang out. Things are cool. And so now he's sort of making this effort to come back into my life. So about another two weeks pass and he calls me up and he's like, uh, you know, let's go out and do something today. So I'm like, all right. So he calls me up and I'm not ready by the time he gets here. So he comes over to, he comes up to wait. And while he's sitting in my apartment, I look at his arm and he has three horizontal cuts across his arm. Um, one near his wrist, one near the the bend of the elbow, and one on I guess that would be your um your your bicep. Um, yeah, whatever the, whatever the muscle is in between the elbow and the shoulder, there was a, a long cut, and we're talking cuts that were about maybe ten ten to twelve inches in length. These are long cuts. So I look at him and, and I said to him, I said, what happened to your arm? And he's like, oh, it's no big deal. Now, I haven't known that he drinks a lot and he's prone to sort of these fits of rage. I'm thinking to myself, OK, this dude clearly got drunk. He was downtown, got into some sort of altercation with someone and it resulted in his arm being sliced not once, but three times. And we're talking deep cuts. I mean, his each cut had probably... I don't know, maybe 40, it looked like 40 to 50 stitches. It was, it was gruesome. So I'm like, what happened? And so I keep pressing him, trying to get him to open up to me, which isn't something I suggest doing. And it's not something that I typically do, but it was such a big deal that just not having answers was really bother bothering me. So finally he says, well, if you have to know, I tried to commit suicide. You know, I tried to kill myself in front of my mother. Er? <laughs> you did what? Okay, about this movie. Um, so, you know, the first thing that pops into my head when he tells me to commit suicide is like, what happens if one day he decides either he doesn't want to go or he wants to see what it looks like someone to go for someone to go before he goes or he wants to go with company? So... I immediately start thinking to myself, okay, this is not someone that you need to be involved with seriously. Like this man has serious issues, issues that are far greater. You know, I I really consider myself to be a very level-headed, very even-killed personality. I consider myself to be um, very informed, very sensitive, but some things are above your pay grade. Some things are beyond your scope. And, you know, like, to me, this man needs medication. Like, there has to be some sort of chemical imbalance. Something's going on with him in a real sort of manic depressive way. Something that I just don't have the skill set or the, 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 the capabilities of writing a pre- prescription for. So when I found out that he had tried to commit, a, commit suicide, because imagine how, I mean, cutting yourself once, once is that takes that takes a lot i mean it takes a lot of pain to to want to cut yourself once but imagine cutting yourself three times so when that when he saw that i was just like okay i have to get out of this i have to figure out out a way to get out of this now 
he was in his right frame of mind. So I did wind up going up going to the movie with him that day. Do not judge me. I do not judge you guys. Don't judge me. <laughs> so I went to the movies with him. But the whole movie I was sitting there thinking to myself, this is probably gonna be the last time I ever see him. You know, but I just didn't want to cause any friction between us. So I was really trying to be as amiable as possible until I was by myself again. So after the movie's over, you know, he brings me home. Um, he goes his way. I go mine. And, and that's that. So at that point, I'm like, I'm done talking to him. So... I didn't call him. He called me a couple of times. I ignored his phone calls. I ignored his text messages. Um, and just left it at that. So one night at about maybe 2.30 in the morning, my phone starts ringing over and over and over again. So it woke me from my sleep. And so I'm half awake, half asleep. I pick up the phone and it's him. He's on my phone. He's crying like like a baby. I mean, literally sobbing. And he's like, I hate my life. I hate myself. I'm about to kill myself. I'm going to crash my car into the back of this, this you know, this semi. You know, I'm just, I, I can't live anymore. Now, I did tell you guys that he was a bodybuilder. And I did, did tell you guys that um, he um, was a raging alcoholic. I'm not sure if I remember that if I told you this or not, but I also found found out later into our dating career, if you will, that he was also on um, steroids. So having read stories and heard stories about roid rage and what that looks like, I'm thinking to myself, this dude is going to be prone to manic episodes. You know, he's, he's, he's imbalanced. And so... When I heard him on that phone crying and knowing that I had seen the previous weeks that he had cut himself so bad, when he's telling me he's going to kill himself, I'm taking that very seriously. This is not like just someone who um, is making idle threats because he's clearly attempted to do it before. So he's on the phone and I'm telling him, look, it's not that bad. You know, you have so much to live for. Just calm down. Just breathe. Talk to me. I'm really trying to talk him through not killing himself or as much as I can over the phone. And he's crying and, you know, um, he clicks over and he calls his mom and he puts his mother on the, on a three-way conversation. So now it's me, his mother, and him. We're all three on the phone. And his mother and I are both, you know, this is our formal introduction via a, a suicide attempt. And he's crying, he's he's sobbing, he's, you know, get sort of giving, and, and this is part part of it that really bothered me, because I'm like, is he suicidal or is, or is this a cry for attention? Because he's like giving us a blow-by-blow blow depiction of exactly what's going on. You know, I'm going down the highway, I'm doing 130 miles, I'm going to, you know, there's a semi like 50 feet in front of me, like, it, it just, it didn't feel right to me, in that sense, because... Not that I'm encouraging people to commit suicide, but I feel like most people who commit suicide do so quietly and peacefully. Um, there are some people, like I remember a story about the R&B singer Monica where her boyfriend, I believe, um, killed himself in front of her inside of a car, like shot himself in the head, if I, if I remember. So there are cases where some people want audiences for their suicides for whatever reason, but in this particular instance, it just didn't feel right. So... He's threatening to kill himself. You know, his mother and I are really pleading with him, telling him, you know, not to do it. And so his mom is like telling him to come to my house. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 please don't have him do that. But in the instance of him wanting to kill himself, I'm like, how can I say no? But I really didn't want the burden of having to deal with this emotionally unstable person. So long story short, he wound up finding himself to my place. I live in a gated community. I walk out to the gate. I buzz him into the gate. He comes through. He jumps out of his car as soon as he's on the opposite side of the gate. And starts telling me, you need to drive. You need to drive. And um, he starts putting his fingers inside of his mouth. And he's trying to force himself to throw up to purge the alcohol. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Like, 
this is not the way I live. This is not the type of stuff that I, that I want in my life. So after he finishes purging, he gets in the car. We drive around the complex. We get to my unit. And he comes up and he continues throwing up and vomiting in my bathroom. I'm trying to get him water and towels and really trying to help him recover as much as I possibly can. So finally, and and he has some sort of condition too. When he drinks, it causes him to get acid reflux really, really bad, like painful acid reflux, which for most people would be an impetus to not drink, but he's able for whatever reason to push through. Um... So he, he's here after he finishes purging, you know, and we wipe him off and all the other stuff. He lays in my bed next to me and then he starts trying to get fresh with me. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, first of all, you stink. Secondly, you just tried to commit suicide. Like, what about that do you believe is conducive to me wanting to to have sex with you so I wound up you know getting him to go to sleep and there was no sexual activity that transpired between the two of us he got up the following day he left and then I blocked his phone number once again the second number that he called me from because I'm like there's no possible way like at this point I feel like I have to be more concerned with my own safety than I I can be for his. So I blocked him and went about my life. So when I was at the movie recently, his mother started contacting me and now she wants to have this meeting with me. But given my history with him, I don't want to be a blip on his radar again. But at the same time, I don't want to not be a woman of my word by by not talking to his mother even though I made her the promise that I would so it's sort of a, a catch-22 for me um so here I am um I'm asking you guys and this is why this is going to be a you say what slash story time because I really want to um to know what your um what your thoughts are, whether you think I should have the meeting, whether you think I should go back on my word, and whether you think I should honor my word, whether you think it's not my problem, whether you feel like I'm not connected, whether you feel like some promises are, were made to be broken. Um, make sure you leave your comments below because she wants to meet with me today. Um, and I just don't think that I'm going. I don't know that it's really in my best interest to go, but um, I want to know what, what you guys think. So please leave your comments below. Um, remember to like, comment, dislike if you don't like. I'm, I'm good with that too. Um, subscribe. Um, and follow me across all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. I'm Cerebral Diva on all platforms. Spell just as it's spoken. Um, no accent marks, no hashtags, none, no underscores. Um, Cerebral Diva, if you can spell, you can find me. Um, And as always in closing, you guys, remember to live better, love harder, and think smarter. It is me, the Cerebral Diva, and I will talk to you guys again soon. Have a good day.